hey everyone, uh, my name's Paul. Uh, I'm the European, uh, UK and European Head of Music Operations at TikTok. And you know, it's just an absolute pleasure to be with you here today to talk about music on TikTok. Um, and over the next 10 minutes or so, I wanna take you through an overview of the extraordinary impact we've made in such a brief period of time, our place at the cutting edge of music culture and discovery, and some of the opportunities ahead for all artists and labels, and of course, show you some awesome TikToks. Um, so for those of you who have been living underwater, um, in just a short period of time, TikTok has become a platform that has given rise to unprecedented uh, viral trends, and it's helped creative talent in Europe gain an audience all around the world. And for so many creators, TikTok has marked the beginning of an exciting new phase in their lives. A launch pad for a new career or a bridge to help create um, shared experiences with an engaged and leaned in community like no other, frankly. So wanted to start with our mission. Um, TikTok is the leading destination for short form mobile video. And our mission is simple, inspire creativity and bring joy. And, you know, TikTok enables everyone to be a creator and encourages users to share their passion and creative expression through their video. It's about allowing users and artists to show their real self and offering an unparalleled opportunity for creative expression. And we do this in several ways. You know, firstly, we provide an incredibly easy to use, inventive and fun way to add sounds and music and visual effects to videos shot right on your phone. And it's also easy, quick and intuitive to bring those ideas to creative life. And secondly, we recommend videos to you based on what rather than, rather than just who you like. And that means that anyone or any idea can go viral, even, with, even without a single follower. And you know, we're unique in that way, connecting fans and artists and providing a new route to communicate and creatively express yourself that's just become such an integral part of the music business right now. And you know, there's been a, a lot written about TikTok's impact on music. And really, the most simple way to understand this is to point to our latest ad campaign that just quite, sim quite simply summarizes this incredible moment. And that is, it starts on TikTok. And so when we think of the role TikTok plays in the music industry, it's really not hyperbole to say that our impact on music and music culture is prolific. And you know, let's start with user numbers. They're big. We announced just two weeks ago that we now have 100 million monthly active users in Europe. And this combined with a similar figure published for the US, so in those two key markets alone, we're now at 200 million monthly actives. And what this incredible and engaged community translates to is billions of views and millions of millions of creations on our platform. Like earlier this month, we published the top 10 summer songs on TikTok. And during this short period of time, June 1st to August 12th, these 10 songs generated over 6.5 billion video views in the UK alone. And our engaged and passionate community of music fans and users drives music discovery and success for artists in the broader ecosystem too. And to take just one example of that, there have been over 80 million creations on TikTok using the top 10 songs of Spotify's global viral chart. And these creations are undoubtedly driving streaming success across the ecosystem. And TikTok's power here to, you know, drive creation in the broader music ecosystem is really summarized by you know, journalist Mark Savage's line you know, from his assessment on the sales and streams from our songs of the summer campaign. And that's TikTok's music team actively promotes trending songs, scouring submissions for un undiscovered talent and facilitating collaborations among musicians and prominent creators. And so when you're talking about the music business in 2020 and to give you a sense of how music starts on TikTok, where do you begin? And the obvious place, of course, is Blackpool. And more specifically, it's the Blackpool grime scene circa 2016. Nothing paints a picture better of how a song starts on TikTok, is reinvented by the community, and then remixed by our audience, quite like this example that's live now. You know, the Blackpool grime scene came to light with an amazing documentary from Noisy back in 2016, which kind of shone a light on this community. And then it went quiet. And then in late June this year, one of the tracks was uploaded to TikTok and the brilliant US creator, Bella Porch, uh, ran with it. So let's take a look. Brilliant. 
brilliant. I love it. And so to say it took off is an understatement. That one video has become one of the most watched on TikTok and the tune one of the most used in the platform's history. Bella's following grew by approximately 2.2 million. And at last check, we're almost at 6 million individual creations for that song, M to the B. And you know, the audience loved it. And we even got whole classes on Zoom joining in. If you would have read your syllabus, you would have known. Oh, that's M to the B, it's 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 M to the B. Wait, what are y'all doing with your heads? And then this month, the artist who started it all off, Millie B, joined TikTok and jumped right in. Millie now has a management team around her and is, is considering her next move uh, following the flood of offers and opportunities that have come in. So it's a really, really exciting place to be. So really, in that case, it's like from Blackpool to the world, it really, really did start on TikTok. Um, in terms of more music discovery, TikTok users are also discovering incredible new music and incredible new artists every day. One of the couple of the examples I wanted to show you, firstly, one is, is an incredible artist called Kat Burns, a super, super talented songwriter from South London. And she's built a fan base with us, sharing her music, replying to fans with original sounds and video, and really taking that two-way fan and artist engagement to a new level. And if you spend any time with, on Kat's profile on TikTok, you'll see why. I got invited to a party in like sweet And they asked me if I could come along I've always wanted to put on my own to stress me What if I let them see me in a dini I know I did And all the size jeans Would they recognize me? Mm -hmm. Without my anxiety Beautiful. And, you know, our users love her artistry. And, you know, we've supported the discovery of her music and watched it take off. And Kat now appears in our latest marketing campaign and has been featured in some amazing publications like The Face and is in talks with label partners. You know, it's most definitely started on TikTok for Kat and we're just super thrilled for everything that's to come. Jumping across the pond, another artist I wanted to point out was a fantastic artist called Jake who's been building his presence and identity as an artist using TikTok. He's creating quirky videos and remixing tracks that are part of the TikTok fabric with the help, of course, of his wonderful mum. Awesome. And so that particular song is a remix of several popular TikTok tracks, including KBFR's awesome Hood Baby and Jack Stauber's Buttercup. And that video has featured in almost 8 million creations. And as his manager said to us, Jake is looking at the career of his dreams thanks to his start on TikTok. Our team here in Europe consistently pushed the boundaries as to how we can continually delight our users. You know, we work with artists, labels, and the wider industry to help bring this creativity to life on the platform, celebrating different genres and helping them find audiences around the world. At any given time, we're partnering closely with the music industry to explore new ways of creativity that help connect music artists with fans on TikTok. Over the summer, using our awesome live feature, we paired artists Ellie Golding, Amory, and Mr. Easy with TikTok creators Holly H, Mr. Tove, and Love Island's Luke Trotman to give users a unique glimpse into the creative process for both a music artist and a TikTok creator. Uh, UK Rap also has a massive fan base on TikTok. Working with um, Mixtape Madness, we created the TikTok Freestyle Challenge with artists and users showing off their rap freestyle skills and posting a 30 second to one minute video rapping over an instrumental beat. So many amazing artists jumped on, on this, including Tiny, Dizzy, Chris Cash, to name a few and they made the most of TikTok's interactive filters and duet function to show off some freestyle battle, battle, battles in action. And then the last expression I wanted to point to was really need the artist need no introduction. David Guetta and Sia chose TikTok to preview their single Let's Love a week before general release, encouraging fans to share their own Let's Love creations and use the new track before anywhere else.
it's all to say really that more and more artists are finding their own creative and joyful ways for self-expression that come to life on TikTok. One of my favorites is this. I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me tell you, I got this ring. Gobble me, swallow me, drink, I'm so that's just amazing. So Andrew Lloyd Webber and Cardi B uh, remixed. Um, also this one. Here are some reasons that I should be named the king of TikTok. One, I'm the king of TikTok. Two, devilishly handsome. Three, the have I said I was handsome? Uh, four, I can do a lot in 15 seconds. Trust me, that's my ex. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And who can deny Lewis is the king of TikTok? And then across the pond, the last example was just Tiger's casual take on TikTok megastar Charlie D'Amelio's dance to his and Sortie's awesome, awesome track, Money Mouth. One, two racks, I'ma blow that. Three, four, five, I'ma hold that, hold that. Six, seven, eight, I'ma show that, show that. Nine, ten racks, I'ma throw that. Hey, drop that ass, yeah, throw it back, throw it back. Spin that cash, you got hella racks. Brilliant. Brilliant. So... Yeah, just to summarize really, TikTok is a truly innovative platform and it has a special place in the hearts of the millions of users who choose it to discover, to engage, to follow and to create. As it started on TikTok for many of these artists and the music they create, I hope it can also start for all of you there on TikTok for you artists and your businesses. And my question to all of you really to leave you with is like, where will your creativity take you? Um, I look forward to working with you all on your own TikTok journeys and thanks very much. Thank you, Paul, for uh, this presentation. Um, before we jump in, I just want to um, briefly mention one thing. Uh, we all know that um, yeah, TikTok is rarely out of the news at the moment um, with lots of speculation about a potential deal in the US. But um, yeah, the TikTok team told me these um, discussions are really fast moving and it's being handled by another team. So Paul won't be able to touch on this today. Um, so we're here to really just focus on the music side of things and how TikTok is becoming such a big part of the industry. And with that and connecting with your last statement, um, I think my first question would be, uh, what are some of the most innovative uses on TikTok um, that you've seen artists doing recently um, in terms of establishing their own social presence rather than um, doing a marketing campaign? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> that's a really, really great question. And I think to start off like with the answer, like, you know, working with artists who are basically some of the naturally, who are naturally some of the most creatively exciting people um, with the most creative ideas, that actually makes my job like somewhat easier. And, you know, artists and creativity, I feel have like a really natural home on, t on TikTok. And some of the examples that I think about, you know, that, that I think have been really interesting of late is, you know, Nina Nesbitt um, has done some incredible like TikToks, like really, really different, focusing on music production and how, how she's creating music and what inspires her. Or I think about like Rosalia, who has this incredible like way of blending like really cool like lifestyle stuff and insights into, you know, her life with some really like high level ideas. Or Kat Burns, who we just ran through in the presentation, is a really incredible example of someone who has just built a lane on the platform and is seeing like really great success. And, you know, one other artist that also jumps to mind is there's, there's a really brilliant artist called Zoe Wees, who's, who's a German artist. Um, and Zoe sings in English. And what Zoe's been able to do is really, in a, to be honest, like Zoe's worked really hard at this and has really, you know, chopped the wood and carried the water, so to speak. But Zoe spent a lot of time replying back to comments and, creating videos on TikTok and really getting to know her um, audience. And you're seeing that more and more in the success of her music because her song Control has gone to become a hugely popular song on the TikTok platform and actually like spread it out now into wider popular culture. So yeah, I, we, we could spend hours talking about all the artists mm -hmm. doing great stuff on TikTok. So yeah, you mentioned this aspect that artists, a lot of artists are taking to TikTok to kind of yeah, share their music and maybe even create new songs on the platform. Um, and this has obviously been a trend. Do you feel like that this is becoming a saturated place at one point or at the moment? Or do you feel like audiences on TikTok are still um, really keen to see that kind of content? No, I, it, it's, we're only just beginning, I feel like, you know, um, like I said, TikTok is all about like, you know, bringing joy and creativity to users. And, you know, there's so much creative going on with artists and, you know, 
artists are making such incredible music that is inspiring other other users to make videos and you know you know communicate what they're about that I, I don't think we're at all saturated. Okay and um, you also mentioned the David Guetta partnership. Um, I think we've seen a lot of interesting partnerships uh, that you've launched especially over the last year whereas maybe Previously, people only thought about TikTok as a platform for hashtag challenges. So yeah. you have things like exclusive song uh, premieres or uh, live VR experiences. So uh, what is your current focus when it comes to developing these new music partnerships? Yeah, and I, you know, and I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad like you didn't use the word marketing in there in a sense, because like what I, what I really believe is that like it's all about The, how can I engage with the TikTok community in a way they're going to love, you know? And what worked with David and Sia was that they wanted to like preview their song, like a short snippet of their song on the platform before, you know, pushing it out any, uh, to, to other platforms and to the wider ecosystem. And that was really just to like, you know, excite the fans and, you know, bring everyone together around the moment. You know, there's a, there's a really, really brilliant artist that if you haven't, you know, for those of you listening in, if you haven't had a chance to check her out, please do. Uh, the artist is called Laura Dana and she's a, she's a brilliant, brilliant rapper coming out of Germany. Laura Dana has done some really clever, you know, engagement and just, and, and creative execution with her, with her fans. You know, she, she created a live stream. Um, oh, sorry. She did a live stream and created a hashtag around it called Dubis Mine, connected with the fans on the, on the live stream to kind of tease and, 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 you know, work with them on, on a new song. And then that song and the hashtag, exploded on the platform following that and you know went to number one in germany and then to complete the circle on her official video she used a lot of the tiktok videos that were created on the platform so yeah it's really just how can we help an artist realize a vision or an idea that they, they have in the most creative way possible yeah and it really feels like just the beginning of these kind of partnerships um and what i also found very interesting is that you've recently um kind of launched your first distribution deal with United Masters. And um, yeah, obviously you've uh, kind of launched the careers of um, many different artists already on the platform, um, such as Ashniko, for example. But with this kind of partnership, where do you see TikTok in heading in terms of its potential to spot and develop new talent? Oh, you know, yeah, it's, it's a really great question. I mean, I, I would say just as more and more artists join the platform, there's just this huge potential for like, a creative pipeline and creative expression, um, you know, and we're seeing TikTok more and more across all our partners become an A&R faci facilitator, you know, and, and that's especially important at the moment, you know, when traditional venues are shut and, you know, what, what's going on in the wider world, that artists still feel that they have somewhere new, fresh and exciting that they can like present themselves. And, you know, I think, you know, we have a role to support artists in their careers and their journeys, whatever route they decide to take. And so our focus is always going to be on the user. Um, we're providing a space that brings more musical talent onto TikTok. And we just want to support the growth and engagement of our TikTok users. And in turn, they're going to support uh, the development and the careers of, of artists that they love on the platform. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you seeing any new ways that TikTok users are engaging with music culture, besides maybe the, the obvious examples that, that we're aware of? Yeah, I mean, one thing that was really interesting, actually, that, um, that I found, I only found out about this like a couple of weeks ago, or no, maybe like only a week ago, but there's, um, there, I mean, there's an amazing artist called, um, called Girl in Red, who if you haven't had a chance to check out on TikTok, um, you should, she, she's brilliant. And um, what I found out a week ago was that um, there's actually um, now a kind of common sort of phrase that's, you know, kind of saturated, you know, has got into culture, which is, um, do you listen to Girl in Red? And that, what that phrase actually means, which, it, which originated on TikTok was, do you listen to Girl in Red? It's a way of asking someone in a very kind of like um, sensitive and discreet way, like what your sexuality is. And so that to me is kind of incredible that our users have you know you know really like resonate you know really kind of taken to to girl in red and you know the amazing artist that she is and then you know remixing that into a way that you know has become popular in in common language um that's pretty incredible yeah that's that's true it's really cool um i actually didn't know about that i have to look it up um so one last question because then we have to wrap up um 
comparatively, TikTok is still quite a new platform compared to other digital platforms. Um, and you have developed quite a lot, as I said. Um, we have read news about things like that the TikTok team would wish that TikTok creations will count towards the charts one day. And also some rumors about if it could potentially be um, a place where users can consume official music videos at one point in the future. How do you envision the TikTok of the future in maybe two to five years time? You know, I, I, I really think it's all about being true to who we are, which is, you know, inspire creativity and bring joy. And, you know, I think, I think what's the most important thing for us aside any other measurement is, do our users come on the platform? Do they feel inspired? Do they see creatively excellent, excellent pieces of, you know, video and TikToks? And does that resonate with them? And do they want to find out more about the, about the artists and the creators that, that make that and, and the incredible music? So in terms of like the question around the charts, I think it's just a question that has to be addressed, I suppose, because it's such a cultural phenomenon, TikTok, and its impact, as we saw in the presentation, is so prolific that it's definitely a discussion, I think, that's worth having. And, you know, where, where I see TikTok in, you know, one to two years time from now is like, you know, first of all, we wouldn't be able to do this without the incredible music and the incredible artists and all the incredible people that we get to work with on a daily basis. And, you know, we have a really passionate and inspired music team at TikTok. You know, we have some brilliant, brilliant people working with us um, in the company. And, you know, we just want to be able to do the most amazing, interesting things with artists and help them realize their dreams. So whichever way that goes in the future will be driven by what our users want and how how creative and you know how far do the artists want to push their creativity okay thanks so much thank you thank you everyone